by 42, mother moved in with us temporarily as her place in a retirement community is being finished. She has been a nightmare since she's moved in. She is constantly up my wife's butt, complaining, nitpicking, she's always got something to say about how she'd never do something my wife does, but then hypocritically says it's fine if I do the same thing. My wife, who has the patience of a saint doesn't complain, but I've been told by both our children, 16 and 13, about things she's said and done. I've told her more than once that she's a guest in our house and to knock off her crap. I feel terrible I didn't realize she was just getting sneakier about it. It came to a head on Wednesday. I was doing a project when my son came in and asked to talk. He said I needed to do something about my mother because he's seen my wife cry more than once because of her. My daughter said she has too, though my wife tries to hide it. After gently pressing my wife about it, she admitted it was true and told me how much she was starting to hate being home now because it was so non-stop with my mom and she didn't say anything because she wouldn't ever want to put me in a bad spot or make me feel like I had to chose. I was furious, my wife should never feel uncomfortable in her own home. I confronted my mom, who immediately turned on the tears, it was taken out of context, my wife just doesn't like her, she's telling me lies. I told her to pack her stuff, I'd allowed her to hurt my wife for far too long. I dropped her off at my aunt's house yesterday. My aunt says I made the right decision and my wife and kids needed to be comfortable in their own home. My mom and brother are furious however and say I'm an idiot for making her homeless. I told my brother he could take her in then, but that's not an option somehow. I don't think I was the idiot at all, but my wife feels like we caused problems in my family, so am I the idiot. Not the idiot. You are a good husband. I've seen far too many posts where the wife is in misery because the mother-in-law is horrible to her and the husband either does nothing or sides with his mother. Don't let your mom or brother get to you. You did the right thing, even your aunt thinks so. Good on you for being there for your wife. You did the right thing. Your mother doesn't have the right to abuse your wife in her own home. You made the choice to be a supportive husband and father. You tried hard and gave your mom several chances to shape up. In the end you listened to your children and wife and made the decision to protect them from absolutely unnecessary torment while doing your mom a favor. How do you think your mom would have acted if you, as an adult, had been staying at her home and it picked and bullied her partner? Not the idiot. She was a guest and should not have been abusing your wife like that. Though you might be slightly the idiot for not realizing there was such an issue earlier. Your brother seems to be allowed to say that her staying with him is not an option. Well, now it's not an option for her to stay with you either, and he has no room to argue. Of course, your mother is going to be mad. She got caught and had to face the consequences. So, I, 21, graduated university last week, obviously there is no ceremony, but I worked hard for years to get where I am, and I was super proud. I wanted to do something to celebrate, so I decided to bake myself a cake. I asked my partner, 25, and my mother-in-law, 53, who is staying with us, if they had any preferences as to what type of cake I should make. They said no, partner said it was a waste of money and he wouldn't pay for it, we should save our money for other things etc. I genuinely felt like I deserved this for working so hard, so I went out and bought all the ingredients myself and made the cake on Wednesday afternoon. Cut to today, it's been nearly a week and the small cake I baked has been eaten, I must say entirely by me, but I did give a tiny tiny bit of sponge to my dog and some to my sister. My partner and mother-in-law decided to sit outside in the garden and day drink, since 11am, they called me out and asked for some cake, mother-in-law specifically wanted a nice big slice of chocolate I didn't make chocolate. I told them there was none of the vanilla cake I made left and that they didn't want any. I said there was some chocolate in the fridge she could have, or I'd happy make her a sandwich or some pancakes, if she was hungry. She lost her ever-loving crap. Completely lost it. She started yelling and screaming I was selfish, how dare I not make a chocolate cake knowing that's her favorite, I didn't, she called me some horrible names, commenting on my weight for eating most of it etc. Now I'm not super thin, but I'm not fat either, but I do have some issues with my weight, and she did make me cry. Mother-in-law says I'm a selfish idiot, she said I'm useless, and how can she trust me to care for her son if she cannot trust me to keep her some cake? 
she also said that I shouldn't be celebrating graduating, she would only celebrate when I become a proper wife and I need to focus on her son's needs more instead of school. I said the cake was a week old, it needed to be eaten fast as it had fresh buttercream and fruit, and even if there was some left, it wouldn't have kept, and she said she didn't want any, it was a waste of money etc. Boyfriend said nothing. I'm now alone in my bedroom listening to her outside still yelling about me wondering if I really am the idiot. Should I have kept her some or should I have pushed a bit more to ask for their preferences instead of just accepting their first answer? Not the idiot. That mother-in-law is crazy and your boyfriend at the very least owes you an apology for not standing up for you when his mom abuses you in your own home. I would expect far more than that because his apology alone won't make your relationship with mother-in-law any more bearable. You can either stand up to her now or expect that she will never change. Your mother-in-law has a very clear idea of what she expects of you and a career of your own desires are clearly not a part of that plan. Also very questionable why your boyfriend considers your graduation to not even be worth the $5 needed to get some stuff for a cake to celebrate, but apparently him sitting outside deserves a cake he didn't make. Not the idiot. You bought the ingredients and made it while your boyfriend said it was a waste and mother-in-law was uninterested. If you're staying with mother-in-law start making plans to find another place to live when the quarantine is over. If mother-in-law is staying with you have a talk with your boyfriend about her finding a place to go. Both mother-in-law and boyfriend are disrespectful idiots. Pick them both out. Mother-in-law doesn't have any business talking to you like that in your house. I know it can be hard to be assertive, so maybe tell a friend you would like to end this relationship and have them come over and help kick them out. Do not let them take advantage of you like this. Your boyfriend is terrible for letting this happen. He never should have let his mother stay this long and he should have said something to his mother in your defense. If he never does against his mother he never will. If she could say something that horrible to you right in front of him without him sticking up for you, that is just a taste of your entire future. Kick them both out. You deserve better. So, I, 24, got engaged to my fiancé, 25, a few days ago. We're really excited and already told our families and close friends, and during the excitement, my mother started asking wedding questions like how big were we thinking, did we have a theme or colors, etc. Then she says we need to have the wedding in June or July. I told her no, hard stop. My fiancé and I live in the south, and for what we want the weather is just too damn hot in the summer. Thought that would be that. The next day, we were talking without my fiancé present, and she again brought up having the wedding in June. She claimed that the summer is the only time my sister won't be busy at vet school, but my sister only just applied and applied to four different vet schools at that and is also considering grad school. I told her no, again, because we don't even know if or where she's getting in, so we can't really plan around anything. When I told my mother I wasn't going to plan around the potential midterm and final weeks of all the potential post-grad plans for my sister, she got upset. I said that she is 22 and should be capable of driving a couple hours to come to a weekend wedding even during a college semester. Now, I feel like the idiot because this is where my mom started crying and telling me I was trying to exclude my sister from my wedding. I told her that I wanted my sister there but that my main focus wasn't going to be picking a date around all of her potential schedules. My mother was really distraught and seemed to think I was trying to maliciously pick a date when she couldn't come and she said that I should wait until my sister makes her post-grad decision in March to pick a date. Again, I told her no and she walked off crying. I feel badly that she's so upset, but I also want the wedding to be about what my fiancé and I want. So, am I the idiot for refusing to plan my wedding around my sister's maybe schedules? Not the idiot. Plan what works for you. Even if you accidentally landed in the middle of exams, your sister will have the longest notice of this and can plan her study around having a few hours off for your wedding, if she wants she can even bring her books and duck out of the reception after dinner to study. No student works without breaks and almost all, even in competitive schools, make time to celebrate birthdays etc. Your mom is making a big deal out of nothing. I'm going not the idiot. With that being said, I do have the experience of being in a highly competitive program. It's stressful and sometimes you won't be able to get away. If your sister has stated this is the time she could come with no conflict, I believe her. 
But if those dates don't work for you and your fiancé, then you are of course entitled to chose what will work for you. Just know she may or may not be able to attend. I had out of town clinicals and wild assignments all semester, every semester. I missed a lot of things. Your mom is putting way too much thought into this. There's a lot that goes into picking a date and your sister's potential class schedule isn't high up on the list of factors. Can you talk to your sister about this? She might be able to reassure your mom that her schedule isn't a top priority for wedding planning and she'll do her best to attend. Also, depending on where she does go to school she could not get any off time in the summer. She could have work placements, labs or dissertations to write over the summer months. My wife, 28, and I, 30, had a baby who is now 3 months old. When we were trying to conceive, her dad, 83, had two massive strokes that have now left him bedridden, with very limited use of his legs and his arms, due to all that, plus his age, we are fairly certain this will be the last grandchild he will know, the rest of her siblings have no interest in having kids anytime soon. When we found out we're having a boy, we decided to name him after her dad, Jackson, with two middle names after my own dad, James and Robert, when we told my parents the name, my dad showed his dislike for it and suggested his own name, we explained that we were naming him after my wife's dad, but that his middle names would be after him, he seemed annoyed, but didn't bring it up again. When our son was born, everyone called him Jackson, except my dad, who refers to him as JR, his own initials, my wife didn't say anything at first, and I didn't think too much of it. Now that our baby has gotten a bit bigger, she has actually expressed her annoyance in it to me, and said we should say something to my dad, as my wife finds it disrespectful. I admit I was taken back, as I don't think it that big of a deal as it is his grandson as well, and he should be able to call him what he wants. My wife got a little upset and said that our son's name means something to her and that she will express so to my dad herself. I told her not to cause drama over something so small and to move on from the fact that my dad will refer to our son as JR. She is now hurt that I am brushing off something important to her, but I honestly don't think it'd be worth what the outcome will probably be. Am I the idiot? You're the idiot. Your father should not have had any say in the child's naming. He is not the parent, and no, he should not be able to call your son whatever he wants. Imagine if he called your son by a nickname you found offensive, or a nickname your son hated, and he was told that, and yet continued to do it. You'd find that disrespectful, right? Yet you continue to allow your father to play pretend that your son's name is the one he picked out, his own name nonetheless. And then you have the nerve to try to rug sweep it and make your wife out to be the bad guy because she quite rightly points out how wildly rude and inappropriate it is. You and your dad are both massive idiots. Grow a spine and stand up to daddy. It means a lot to her and your dad is being unbelievably petty by calling the child by his own name rather than the child's actual names. It comes across as your dad being both jealous and kinda disrespectful to your wife and her family. The name means a lot to your wife, and it's not like it'll be any extra effort for your dad to use it. Why do you care more about what your father thinks than you do about what your wife and mother of your child does? I think you should say something strongly to your old man, because his behavior is just unbelievably petty given the situation, and that crap should be called out, but I also think your wife should just roll with it overall. It's one person. Being her dad's name, though and given his death, it is a big deal to her, though and she is obviously sensitive about it, so you are the idiot for not handling it better and minimizing your wife's feelings on the matter. I'm 35 and child-free. My sister is 33 and the mother of three kids, between 6 to 10 years of age, two boys and a girl. I have always had a strained relationship with my sister and usually avoid being around her kids as I don't really like kids in general. Yesterday, my sister came over unannounced with her kids. She told me her brother-in-law had met with an accident and she and her hubby needed to go see him in the hospital. She said she needed me to watch her kids for the evening as our parents are out of town. I told her to get a sitter, but she said she couldn't get one on such short notice. I refused again, telling her I had never babysat before and was looking forward to a quiet evening. First she told me she was just leaving them there. I told her I would call a child welfare committee and would report her for abandonment if she pulled something like that. She begged and pleaded and actually began to fake cry. As I didn't want to provide my neighbors with entertainment, I reluctantly agreed. 
At first things were fine. The kids were a bit rambunctious, but still somewhat tolerable. They ate their dinner, without starting a food fight, and then I left them in the living room to watch a movie. I was in the study getting some work done. I had brought my cat and dog in there with me as I wanted to keep them safe from the kids. Suddenly, I heard a loud crash. I rushed to the living room and found my precious antique clock that I kept on the mantelpiece on the ground in pieces. It was worth well over 1k dollars in USD. I'm not American. I was furious of course and asked how the hell this happened. The eldest kid incoherently explained that they had taken it down to look at it and then the younger two were fighting over it and dropped it. Cue ear shattering wailing from the other two, blaming one another for the demise of my prized possession. I had had enough. I called my brother-in-law and told him to come over immediately and get his spawn out of my home. He asked what was wrong and I told him what they had done. He had the gall to tell me I was overreacting. One of the kids, I think the youngest had started bawling now. I told my brother-in-law to come at once and get his kids. He said he was on his way. He came to get the kids but didn't leave before lecturing me on the importance of family. I told him to get lost. This morning I received angry texts and phone calls from my parents and several relatives asking how I could be so heartless and how I could value a clock more than my niece and nephews. I've told them I don't care what they think. Because the way I see it, I was completely within my rights in kicking them out. They should just be grateful that I've decided not to make my sister and brother-in-law pay for it. Judging from the fact that they have three kids, they probably can't afford it. Am I the idiot, or are they? You know what? In my opinion you are the idiot, not for being upset about your clock, and not because you don't want to babysit, but because your sister was struggling with a family emergency, begged you for help, and after you accepted the responsibility you left very young kids by themselves with no supervision, and expected them to just figure it out. Then when something bad happened you flipped out at the curious children, and called their parents to pick them up, and made them feel horrible, even though you had left them alone. First off you sound like a pretentious idiot. Not to mention your sister told you she had an emergency and that a family member was in an accident and she had to beg you to watch them for a short while, really? You were their last option here. Second, you left three children between the ages of 6 and 10 unsupervised in your house. You literally hold yourself up in another room with your pets to avoid them. You didn't talk to them about house rules or anything. You're just as much at fault here as the kids. Your sister was having a family emergency, and you're being an idiot about it. You might not like kids, but you don't have to be mean about it. It won't kill you to watch them once in a while. You sound like the kind of child-free monster that gives everyone who doesn't want a child a bad name. It's your fault the clock was broken. You left three young children unsupervised because you valued your quiet time more than making sure they didn't get hurt or hurt any of your things. Again, it wouldn't have killed you to watch them for a few hours. Had you been watching them like you were supposed to, your clock wouldn't have been broken.